Hey guys, after finishing my x-ray backscatter imaging project, I realized that I could also build an x-ray CT scanner, uh, which pr produces even more interesting images. So let me show you what's involved. A CT scanner, or CAT scanner as they used to be called, uh, stands for computed tomography, where tomography means that we're going to get a sectional view, like a slice, through a 3D object, and computed because we're going to use a, an algorithm to reconstruct the 3D image. Since we can't actually cut what we want to inspect with a knife to get a slice of it, what we have to do is take x-ray images from around the periphery of the object and then use a computer algorithm to reconstruct all of the 3D data. In a conventional medical CT scanner, the patient stays still and the x-ray source and the x-ray detector circulate around the patient in a ring. Electromechanically, this is fairly difficult because the rotating ring has to have uh, an electrical connection that goes through the rotating surface. So they probably use an RF transmitter or something to get the data out, and then slip rings to get the power in. Uh, in my case, since I don't want to build something that big, I'm going to keep the x-ray source and detector still, and then rotate the object. The x-ray source that I'm using is a standard x-ray tube probably very similar to those used in commercial CT scanners, but mine is uh, fairly less powerful. So my tube runs at about 50 kilovolts at about 1 milliamp. So the x-ray beam will turn on and illuminate the phosphor screen, and the, the subject, in this case a frozen chicken, will obstruct the x-rays and create a shadow on the uh, screen. So I'll get a picture of that. And then the x-rays will shut off, the camera will end the exposure, and I'll rotate the subject by about 8 degrees and then turn on the x-ray and make another exposure. It can continue doing this all the way around 360 degrees. The output of this data collection is 45 two-dimensional images that show uh, x-rays penetrating all the way through the subject. Unfortunately, this doesn't give us any 3D information directly. All we have is a bunch of 2D images. So we feed this into an algorithm called filtered back projection, which basically does the reverse of what happened in reality. So imagine in the computer there is a three-dimensional space uh, occupying the space where the, the subject would be. And the two-dimensional image from the phosphor screen is extruded along a path heading back to the x-ray source. So we know that all the shadows created on the screen were caused by features in the 3D subject, and we know that the only source of x-rays here is, is basically a pinpoint, a, a point source inside the x-ray tube. So if we, if we trace all of the shadows on that screen back to the point source inside the x-ray tube, then we'll know where all those features existed in the 3D volume. And what we do is we uh, add up all of the images, all the 45 images, by rotating this model around 8 degrees at a time in space. We end up with a 3D volume of data and we can use that to create a 3D rendering or we can uh, produce a slice at any angle and position through the, through the volume to take a look at what's inside the object. I built this project using an Arduino to sequence the whole thing and the Arduino controls a stepper motor driver and the stepper motor is coupled to a very large ring bearing uh, just through some rubber o-rings right on the shaft of the stepper motor and I calibrated this by uh, spinning the whole thing around by one full revolution and counting how many steps it took and then dividing by 45. Originally I was going to stay in the garage and coordinate all this by hand, but the amount of backscatter x-rays coming off of the, the screen and the shop walls and everything was kind of more than I wanted. One problem is that the camera takes uh, 30 seconds to get a good exposure at ISO 800 and then the camera automatically does a dark frame subtraction, so each exposure takes a little over a minute and I need 45 exposures, so it's kind of a long time to be hanging around. So I set up the Arduino and used a, um, an intervalometer to control my camera and then used the Arduino to control the intervalometer. I could have gone directly from the Arduino to my camera, but I didn't have the weird four conductor uh, tiny phone jack that goes into the camera body. The Arduino also controls the x-ray tube, so during the camera's dark frame it shuts the x-ray tube off so that it maintains about a 50% duty cycle.
which is um, you know fine without a fan even for this x-ray tube. My garage is pretty dark at night so I just added um, a couple of very simple light blockers to keep uh, small light sources from outside the garage from getting in through the windows and I was able to do a 30 second exposure without much background noise at all. Processing the images was fairly straightforward. I used Panasonic's uh, Silky Pix, which came with my camera, and uh, captured the images in RAW and then exported them as 16-bit monochrome TIFFs to try to get as much dynamic range as possible. And then I used uh, Adobe Bridge and um, the batch uh, setting in there to perform the same set of actions on each photo. So in Photoshop I imported one and set up some guides and um, distorted the picture back to square. So since I was using my camera to take a picture of the screen off axis there's uh, quite a bit of perspective distortion. So I used Photoshop to correct for that and played with the levels a little bit until I ended up with uh, an image as if the camera were in line. One reason not to put the camera in line of, of the x-rays is that you get a lot of hot pixels. So if I turned the projection screen or the uh, phosphor screen around and then put the camera straight onto it, the camera would be in the x-ray beam. And that, that would definitely cause quite a bit of pixel noise. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. See you next time. Bye.